Hi, you're here because you want to code, or you like my other videos, but who am I, and why am I teaching you how to code? Let me tell you a quick story. I'm in high school. I'm interested in creating a game or making programs that don't exist nor should exist. I hop on YouTube and scrub through dozens of boring, slow, confusing tutorials until there's an error I don't know how to fix, and I give up. Years pass and I forget about it until my senior year of high school. AP Computer Science. Doesn't sound too hard, I guess. I have... some... experience. Okay, okay, I just, I just want, want to give you credit. Anyways, we go over some fundamentals and finally get to the coding process. Something in me clicked. Having grasped the fundamental knowledge of programming in Java inspired me to go further ahead in the class, make funny programs, make small system-based games. What's a for loop? What's an object? Why can't I use integer.parseint in my homework? You'll get that one later. I finished the course in less than a semester and spent the rest of second semester helping the students in the class and creating bigger games with real graphics and key listeners. I learned and did all this because of the interactivity and entertainment value of the class, and that inspired me to pursue more programming opportunities in college as well. Education should be interactive and entertaining, and that's what I plan on doing with this course in Java. Now let's get started with some fundamentals. Programming is just telling a machine to do something. It all starts with binary, or having two options. Think of a light switch. Flip it up, the light bulb turns on. Flip it down, it turns off. Now imagine having an array of 25 light bulbs and light switches. All the switches can be turned on and turned off. Imagine the possibilities. Okay, real mature guys. Anyways, that's essentially programming. A bunch of little light bulbs that we manipulate. Ones and zeros. But how does one tell a computer what to do with only ones and zeros? That's where programming languages come in. Think of it like adding more wires to one switch, so you only have to flip one switch to turn on 16 bulbs. Maybe you want to make an adding calculator, so you make 5 switches, 1 through 5, so if you flip on 1, 4, and 5, 10 light bulbs would be lit, so you would know that 1 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 10. Programming languages are like this, but just on a way larger scale. There's a lot more to it, but this series isn't about electrical engineering. If logic gates and transistors sound interesting to you, like it was for me, I'd highly recommend watching the computer science course on the Crash Course channel. Those are the fundamentals. Now let's get into the coding. To do that, you'll need an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. For this course, we'll use Eclipse Oxygen. A link will be in the description. Just create a new Java project, name it Tutorial, and you'll be greeted by, oh god, that's bright. Well, the first thing you're going to do is go into Window, General, then Appearance, and change it to its dark theme. Ah, that's better. Now we'll start coding in the next part of this series. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll stick with me as we learn to code.